Hello everyone and welcome to KnowHow's webinar on energy measurement with Kyle MDK and the Ulink Plus. My name is Alexander Maisup and I work as a sales engineer at KnowHow Solutions. And today I have my colleague. Yeah, my name is Christopher Martinson. Uh, I work as field application engineer here at KnowHow. And uh, so today I will do the presentation here on energy measurement with Kyle MDK and Ulink Plus. First, we, I will just show you the agenda of today. Uh, we will start with Kyle MDK, a short introduction, and then we'll go into Ulink Plus. And then we'll have spend the most of the time on a demo showing how to do energy measurement in Kyle MDK and Ulink Plus. And then at the end, we will have a Q&A session. For the questions, please send, use the chat window to send in your question. Uh, we, we will ask you to remain muted during the entire presentation and only send your question during on the chat. So let's get started. So first, Kyle MDK. MDK stands for Microcontroller Development Kit and is a tool for embedded development of for microcontrollers from the company Kyle, which is an ARM company. The focus for this tool is to have a complete suite with development tools for Cortex-M devices. So it consists of a Microvision IDE and a Microvision debugger, but also a compiler, or actually two compilers, ARM compiler version 5 and ARM compiler version 6, where ARM compiler 5 is the more classic ARM CC compiler that you might have used, and ARM compiler 6 is the new version, which, which is based on the CLang frontend. And on top of the tools, there's also a lot of software components that's running on your embedded device. These are delivered as software packs, and they contain startup code, Simsys driver, Simsys Artos, and also a lot of middleware components like TCP IP stack, USB stack, file system, etc. And if you would like to build a IoT enabled device, there is also included embed TLS for SSL and TLS encryption and IoT connectors to be able to connect to different cloud vendors like uh, Microsoft, Azure, uh, AWS, and IBM, etc. There are four different editions of Kyle MDK. There is a light edition which is free of charge, uh, but it's limited in size. So you can only debug and compile applications that are less than 32 kilobytes. And then there is the essential edition with, with no code limitation. And we have the plus and professional edition where you add a lot of middleware components. The Ulink Plus that we will talk about today will work with all of these editions. On top of Kyle MDK, Kyle also offer a family of debug and trace adapters called Ulink. They range from Ulink 2, which is a low-end device with low-speed serial wire trace, up to the high-end device called Ulink Pro, which support a serial wire trace in high speed, but also 4-bit TPIO trace to be able to do instructions trace from ETM. But in the middle, we have the Ulink Plus, which is a debug and trace device that supports serial wire trace at high speed, but that also have the functionality for doing energy measurements, and it also have IOs, logic IOs, that can be used for, for, for testing. A little bit more detail about the Ulink Plus. It's a very compact device. It's only 60 two by 44 millimeters in size. And the connection to your PC is USB 2.0. And it's actually a micro USB connector on the device. It has digital IO pins, as I mentioned. Uh, we will not talk much more about that in this presentation. And you have the JTAG or CRY debug interface, which is a standard 10 pins ARM uh, connector that's our available on most boards today with Cortex-M devices. 
and it also has a port for power measurements. And the uh, both the JTAG and the power measurement are isolated, so you can do hot plugging on already running devices. A little bit more details about the power measurements. So inside of the Ulen Plus, there is a 16-bit Delta Sigma A and D converter with a sample rate of 20 megahertz that is used to measure both the current and the voltage of uh, your device. So the resolution of the uh, current consumption is down to 250 nanoamps. That is with the default 2.5 milliamp range for the current. But you can increase this range by using external shunts. So as you can see on this picture, uh, default, without an external shunt, you measure the current over a 100 ohm, ohm resistor. But with an external shunt, you could decrease this uh, resistance as you have a parallel connection there with some external shunt to be able to increase the current range to uh, up to 250 milliamps, for example. Actually included in the package, there are four different external shunts uh, available so you can just connect them. Or you can have one of your own with your customized resistance on it. So the current, current consumption is measured. That's the, you have the current input and current output. So that is what you measure. But you also measure, as I mentioned, the voltage. And you measure the voltage from current input to ground. So that is what you are measuring with the Ulink Plus. So I'm going to go into a demo and show how to set it up and see what you can do with this tool with energy measurement. But first, I wanted to show you just a picture of the setup that I'm using. So as you can see here, I have an ARM Ulink Plus, and we have a 10 pins debug and zero wire trace connector connected to the board. And we also have a small PCB, as you can see. Uh, and that's actually the shunt resistor there. Uh, that is correct, connected to the Ulink Plus, and then there are some wires connected to the power supply for the board. I'm used for the demo here. I'm using a board with an SDM32 F407, which is a Cortex M4 device. And when I when I've connected the uh, Ulink Plus to the board, I've selected to measure only the power power supply to the MCU. So I don't care about the uh, energy consumption of the display and so on. So I, so that's my setup. So let's go into a demo. I will switch over to Kyle Microvision. So this is the ID Kyle Microvision, which is part of the Kyle MDK. Um, as a basis of this demo, I've used just one example project. Uh, one of the many example projects that comes with the tool. And uh, it runs the RTX RTOS, which is a SimSys RTOS. And uh, what I've done, I, I've added some code of my own, but that's really not necessary for this demo. But, uh, but I'm going to show you what is necessary to do to be able to do energy measurements on, on your hardware. So I will go into the options for target and under debug settings. And here you might see that I have selected Ulink Plus. So that was the first thing I had to do. I had to select the Ulink Plus as a debug adapter. And the second thing I had to do was that I had to enable trace. Because doing the energy measurements, I would like to correlate that with different events in my application. For example, the interrupts. And that we can use do, do using trace over the serial wire output, as you can see here, which is, in this case, the serial wire output will go in 42 megahertz. And I have enabled exception tracing. That is so that I can see the interrupts going on in my, in my application. So that was the second thing I had to do to uh, get energy measurement running on this board. And there's one more thing. And that is that I've added an initialization script for the Ulink Plus. 
this is this script comes with a tool, so it just you just have to point it out. I will show you the content of it. And actually, I'm going to use the configuration wizard here. It's easier to show the content of the script. So the only thing I've done in this script is actually that I have enabled Ulink plus power measurement. And I have selected the size of the shunt resistor that I'm using in my setup. Because the tool needs to know the size of the shunt resistor. And here you can also configure the, the IO pin configuration. But I'm not using that in this demo. so. This is it. So, so that is very, very simple to set up a new project uh, for energy measurement with Kyle MPK. So now I'm going to show you what you can do uh, with the tool regarding energy measurements. So there are two ways that you can do energy measurements. You can do it without any debug support. Um, that means that you just connect uh, to the target more or less and measure the current consumption and voltage. But with that, you cannot have any correlation with the um, events that's happening in your application. So the second option is that you do it with a, with a normal debug session. So you have, have all the information available and can start stop the application and have all the trace data available. So that's what I'm going to use in this demo. So let's go into the debugger. This is standard view of the debugger. I'm going to open a window that is very, very useful when doing energy measurements. And that is something called system analyzer. You can do that from using this button here or from the view menu system analyzer. So system analyzer is a, a tool in Kyle MDK that um, aggregate data or statistics from different sources and display them in one, in one window. So you can uh, have a correlation of the data from different sources and so on. So as you can see now, this window is empty. Uh, that is because I have not started execution on my CPU yet. So. I will start execution now, so we fill up this window with some data. Like that, and we can halt execution now and look into what, what we have recorded. So on top here, I can see actually the system clock or the core clock uh, of the CPU. It's running in 168 megahertz. I'm not really interested in that right now, so I will, I will minimize it. And below it, you can see the current consumption and the voltage. Uh, in this demo, I'm not really interested in the voltage because it's it should be a rather stable. It just have small fluctuation and so on. So I will make this a little bit smaller. And then we have some more uh, data down here coming from different sources. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit, actually, so we see more detail. So for example, we can see that we have exception tracing. So here we can see the interrupts that's going on uh, is happening in my application. So we can see the system tick and so on. And down here, you see something called event recorder. Um, that is a tool or a way with Kyle MDK to get events or get output from the software of different events in the code and so on. Uh, default in the setup, it was enabled for getting um, um, information about task switches and so on in the autos. And that is actually what we see down here. It says thread events here. So here we can see the, the task or the threads that we have in this application. So we can see when the application uh, thread at main is executing from here to here. And here we go into the idle thread and so on down here. So as you can see here, we have a correlation with energy consumption up here, or current, uh, and the, the thread execution down here. So for example, at this point, when we have rather low energy consumption, that is actually very well correlated with when the time we are in the idle thread, as you can see down here. And when we have the high energy consumption up here, 
you can see is good correlation with when we are in a thread called app main down here, this one. So immediately you see the correlation between the current consumption and the thread execution. Okay, and you can also, for example, measure the time here. If I just click there and go here, you can see it down here by my mouse that it's roughly 268 uh, milliseconds that we're spending in idle, uh, more or less, or when we have low energy consumption in this case. But if we're interested to look into these spikes that we see here, we can zoom in and look more at that. But first, I wanted to show you that you can filter the, the curve or the data that you see with, with a low pass filter. So you can select if you want to see more details or less details. So you can have a five kilohertz low pass filter, meaning that the curve will be rather flat. So you, you filter away a lot of the noise and all the details, or you can have a 160 kilohertz filter, which means that you will see a lot of the details here of the current consumption measured. But look, let's, let's look into these spikes that we see here by zooming in a little bit. We can see here that, oh, a little bit too much like that. We can see here, if I just click here and click there, I can see that it seems like these events, if you look down here, happens like every 40 milliseconds. And they actually seem very, very well correlated with the thread ADC that you see down here, because that is also executing every 20 milliseconds. So these spikes here are caused by the execution of the thread ADC. Also here, it seems to be something in the middle here, and other spikes, and that's actually caused by the execution of two other threads, thread button or but and thread lead that you see down here. So you have rather detailed uh, uh, correlation here with the thread execution. And actually here in the middle here, you also see there are some smaller spikes there that are not so high, so we can zoom in even more. And as you can see here, there seems to be spikes. If I, if I click there and measure the time, you see down here, it's a roughly one milliseconds between these spikes. And that's actually caused by an interrupt or the system tick that you see here. This is the system tick and they occur once every millisecond. And that is what you see up here in the, when we have measured the, the current to the MCU. So you can have correlation with the events coming from the serial wide trace, which is the threads or the, the interrupts that you see here, and also the thread events or toss switches down here that comes from the event recorder. Actually, you can also have correlation with other type of trace events. I'm going to zoom out here a little bit. Because uh, we see here in this line here, we say it says data watch delay val. This is uh, a, a trace data that is coming out of the serial wire output. So I have selected that I would like the, the MCU to output on the trace or serial wire output all writes or reads to this variable called delay val. And we can see the value of it here. and. This is actually just the value of the potentiometer on the board. So during the execution here, I did change the potentiometer. So you can see it's going down here. So you can also correlate the, the task switches and the energy consumption with some custom data values that you would like to trace. And actually, uh, this data value should correspond to the time we spend in idle here. If you look down here, it's roughly around 260 milliseconds that we spend in idle, and that's actually the value of this variable. So down here, we see it has a lot much lower value, and you see that we're spending le much less time in idle or have low energy consumption here. Okay, so 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 here we have. The, all the different sources of trace data and so on that we can uh, correlate energy consumption to. There's even one more thing that you can use to 
analyze the power consumption in your MCU. And that is based on the event recorder. As I mentioned, all of these thread events, they are coming from the event recorder. They are, they are default. But you can also annotate your own code to, to um, get your own custom events in the event recorder. So I just I close the system analyze for now because I just wanted to show you this window here. This is the event recorder. So you will see a lot of information from the RTX kernel about toss switches and so on. But you also see here something else. And this is actually a custom event that I have created added in my code. So if we just open this file, here is an example of what I've done here. In this function called Trigo, I have added in the beginning event start D0 and event stop D0. So this was actually not this event, because this is another one. This is event 1. This is event 0. But you will find in this window the event 0 as well. So with event recorder, you could specify for profiling and end your measurement. There are four groups. Events start A, B, C, and D. And each group has 16 slots, uh, 0 to 50. So in this case, I'm using slot 0 in group D. So with this, we can do analysis of the time and the energy consumption that's going on into the, in this function in this case. So to make it easier to see this in the system analyzer, I'm going to disable all the thread events from the RTX kernel. And so that easy, this is just to make it easier to see. And then we will zoom out, and now we'll start the execution again. And let's stop the execution. So as you can see here at the end, uh, now if I zoom in here, now we don't see anything down here. So we don't have any thread events. That's because I've disabled them. But we still have something in the event recorder here. So I will zoom in here a little bit more. So here we actually see all of these start stop of different kinds of events so for example here um, start d1 or we should have a start d0 here as well so this is when this event that i've specified in the trigger function it was here it's just actually in the beginning here somewhere in the beginning of the time with high energy consumption and and actually the stop should be somewhere down here, uh, I need to zoom in here to see it here. So with this, here it is. So with this, you can do correlation also with custom events in your application and correlate that with the current consumption of your MCU. And these event records that we have created can also be used for another view to get more long-term measurements and profiling of your code and your application. And you can see that in the event statistics here. I'm just quickly going to show you this. So here you can see all of this event start group A, B, C, and D. I'm not really, I'm only using group D. And in group D, I only have defined slot 0 and slot 1. But here you can see, for example, the total execution time here, 9.7 to seven seconds, and we can actually see the electrical charge, the Q value, the total for this function or this event. So it was 358 uh, milliamp seconds, and so on. And you can also see the minimum value and the max value here. And so, on. so that was the demo I wanted to show you today. Um, so please. If you are interested in seeing, reading more about how to use KLMDK for energy optimization, there is a very, very good app note on, on Kyle's homepage, so kyle.com. This, this is an app note showing how to do uh, energy optimization of a Bluetooth beacon. So you will find it if you go into the uh, kyle.com and just click on Ulink Plus, you will find this app note. But you will also get the link here in the thank you email that we will receive after this webinar. 
So now it's time for questions. So if you have any questions, please type them in in the chat box.